Hello friends, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will learn about COBOL basic verbs. So this is the agenda. These are some of the basic verbs which we will be using while doing COBOL programming like accept, display, initialize, then move, add, subtract, multiply, divide and compute. Now we will cover each one of them in detail. So accept verb. Suppose you want to accept some data from JCL or from the user, then how you will do it? For that we use accept verb and the syntax is accept date. If you accept date, it will fetch you the system date and if you want to accept some data name, suppose if you want to accept the name of the user, then in JCL the user can pass his name or her name and from here the COBOL program will accept it. It is the same JCL which is going to execute this COBOL module. So in the Sysin DD star, will mention the data name like whatever you want to mention whatever value you want to pass and COBOL program will accept it here. Then we have display statement. Suppose you want to display any variable data variable or if you want to display any comment or anything that can be done through display statement. You simply need to write display the data name or any message whatever you write. If you are writing any comment line that should be in double quotes. Then we have initialize. Initialize verb is used to initialize a group of item or elementary item. So is this will initialize suppose if we have declared one variable that is of uh, x so that is alphanumeric then it will put spaces inside it. Suppose if we initialize a number then it will initialize it to 0. Then we have move. Suppose you move, want to move a data variable data into another variable then what you will do is you can use move statement. So move data 1 to data 2. Here you need to give the variable name whatever data is present in data name 1 will be copied to data name 2. Then we have add. Add verb is used to add two or more numbers and store the result in the destination operand. So it will add A to C giving B. Suppose if you eliminate this part giving part then it will add A to C and the results will be stored in C. Similarly we have subtract. It is used to subtract one variable to from another variable like subtract a from b giving c. So it will subtract a from b and it will store the results in c. Suppose if you eliminate giving part and simply you write subtract a from b then it will subtract a from b and store the results in b. Then we have multiply. Multiply verb is used for multiplication operations. Then the syntax is multiply a by b giving e. So here it will multiply a by b and the results will be stored in e. Also it is same as if you remove this giving part it will multiply a by b and the results will be stored in b. Then we have divide. Divide verb is used for division operations like divide a by b giving c remainder this. So here the results will be stored in c and the remainder will be stored in r. Then we have compute. So it is used to write arithmetic expressions in COBOL. It is a replacement of add, subtract, multiply and divide. If you want to write a formula like a plus b into c or something like that. So you can do this by simply writing compute a then you can write the arithmetic operation here uh, along with the variables then this will be uh, the results will be stored in a after the computation. So now let's see all these functions practically. We have seen the description and syntax of basic verbs. We will now see how to implement them in the COBOL module. I have coded one module for this. Program name is hello. In working storage section, I have declared all the numbers which we will be using for calculation purpose. So here is we have accept name number and uh, the results will be stored in these variables. So we will start with procedure division. Accept WS accept. Here I have declared one variable WS accept in which we will be accepting the values from the user. Accept verb is used to get data such as date, time or day from the operating system or directly from the user. We can pass this data from the JCL as well. We will see in a while. If a program is accepting data from the user then it needs to be passed through JCL as we have discussed and if we get if it is getting the data from operating system then here you need to mention from and the field of the system 
like from where you're accepting whether you're accepting system date whether you're accepting system time in that scenario you need to write accept this and then you need to write from and if it is time then system time so you need to figure it out what is the variable name which is for your system while installation we used to define these variables like how the date should be stored and in which variable it will be stored it will be a global variable and it will it is available to all the users next we have display web display we have seen it earlier also in this we used to display the literals or comment lines or anything whatever you want to display here we are first displaying ws accept which is a literal and then we are displaying the values which are present in ws accept variable here I have initialized WS number. In WS number, if you if you go and see, I haven't given any value. So it must be having high values or low values. So first it will be showing those values or maybe some garbage value as well. When we initialize this WS number, it will contain zeros because its big close is 9. So 9 is numeric. If we initialize a alphabetic or alphanumeric, then spaces will be stored in the variable. So here what I have done is, first we will be displaying WS number before initializing and then we will be displaying it after initializing. Then I have displayed all the numbers. Then we will start with add operation. Here we have given add WS num1 to WS num2. First I have displayed the values of num1 and num2 in this scenario num1 will be added to num2 and the result will be stored in num2 in the next statement num1 and num2 will add num1 and num2 and it will be stored in ws add if you mention a giving clause then the value will be stored in the variable which is mentioned after giving in above scenario these will be added and the result will be stored in num2 itself in this scenario result will not be stored in num2 it will be stored in ws add this is applicable for all multiply divide subtract if we mention a giving clause then the result will be stored in giving otherwise it will be stored in the second variable which we are mentioning similarly if we are doing ws num3 subtract ws num3 from ws num4 giving ws sub so here num3 will be subtracted from number 4 and result will be stored in sub sub ws sub then we have multiply operation here ws num5 will be multiplied by ws num6 and the result will be stored in ws mul and then we are displaying them in divide statement we are dividing ws num8 by ws num7 here the results will be stored in WS div and if there is any remainder then remainder will be stored in WS rem and then we are displaying them compute statement we directly mention the formula write compute enter the statement give the variable name and then give the expression like WS7 num7 minus WS num8 plus 2 times of WS num7 then we are displaying all these elements First of all, we will compile this module and then we will execute this module. We have seen this earlier also. Submit the job. Here you got maxcc4 maxcc4 is for warning messages and it can be ignored if you get if you are getting maxcc0 or maxcc4 then both these are fine if you are getting a completion code greater than 4 then it's a problem then you need to fix it anyways we'll see why we are getting maxcc4 and we'll fix it and and if you get more than maxcc4 then also you need to know where to go and how to fix we'll go to stool start m then 5 sdsf status of job st open this job
here you can see LKED step is also executed the reason is it is a warning message that's the reason it is executed if if you get the maxc greater than 4 only then sysprint cobol step first step will be shown here so the second step will not be executed we'll see what are the messages present here just go to an mf8 here you can see warning 1 and in error severe if you have anything below this line then you need to fix it and the problem statements will be written here what is the warning here it is saying a blank was missing from character w in column 33 i'm doing f11 a blank was assumed so that's the reason we can ignore this it has already assumed a blank so we'll go and see what which blank this system is talking about we'll open the cobol module again It is saying in line number 15, column 33. Hello, just a second, I will, I will check the line number. Okay, we'll go to end. Here you can see WSCOM, the space was not there between this comma, with th this single quote, and this. If we mention this space here, And if you submit the compile job again, this time you will not get any maxc4. Even if we execute the module directly, then also that will be fine because it will execute the program as it has already assumed. Here you can see it has already assumed a blank. I will show you from here also you can submit the job. Just write sub here, press enter. You got RC0. It means step has been submitted. We'll wait for the result. And this time you got maxc0. Now we'll execute this program. Edit. In this, we have passed one parameter. You remember in the program, in the first statement, we are accepting WS accept. We can mention any variable name there. That's not important. The important thing is here you need to pass the values. I'm calling hello program. It is picking load from this library, printing all the messages in spool. Then in DD star, we are passing the parameters. If you have two parameters to pass, so this first one will be passed to the first accept statement. And if I enter second line, the second one will be passed to the second accept statement. So it is in sequence. First accept, the first line here, second accept, second line. So it will pick automatically. So in our case, tutorials point will be picked. So we'll submit and see the result. You got max is zero. We'll go to spool. This was compile job, so we'll open our job which we submitted. This is our job. Question mark. We'll go to sysout. Simultaneously, we'll open the program as well to see what logic we have coded there. We'll start with procedure division itself. Here you can see. We have first accept statement and then we are displaying tutorial point. We are displaying accept. Then we are moving accept to WS name. We are then displaying both accept and name. So we'll see this. First line tutorials point. Then accept we have uh, we have taken the value of this variable from JCL. Then this WS accept was moved to WS name. So uh, we have got the same result. Then here you can see WS number before initialize statement this was blank so no value was there high values and low values will be see you can see them if it is in if you have mentioned the hex on mode so we'll not worry about that but after that we have just given initialized ws number since it was a numeric field so it has got five zeros because we have declared it as a nine nine five so numeric of five 
you got this uh, initial initialize statement 0 then I have displayed all the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 I will talk in terms of instead of num 1 num 2 I will say 1 2 3 till 8 so in the first add operation we have added 1 and 2 and the results are stored in 2 itself here you can see the first statement we'll start with the add operation add 1 and 2 and the results will be stored in 2 itself we'll see, check this 1 was 10 2 was 20 so if we add them 10 plus 20 is 30 and now we are displaying them here number 1 is 10 number 2 should be 20 but the it is added and results are stored in num2 itself so we got the answer as 30 further what we did is we added number 1 and number 2 again and the results are stored in WS add so we'll check this also here num1 was 10 num2 was 30 this time it was not stored in num2 because we have mentioned the giving statement so we have seen now WS add is 40 so 10 plus 30 is 40 now we have subtract statement so we have subtracted number 3 from number 4 and giving WS sub so it will be equivalent to WS sub is equal to WS num4 minus WS num3 WS num4 was 40 num3 was 30 here you can see result as 10 then we have multiply operation in this I will do F8 in this 5 was 50 6 was 60 and if when we multiplied them 5 into 6 so result is 3000 so in this also we have mentioned giving statement if we have removed this giving the result will be stored in num6 itself then we have divide num8 by num7 giving this divisor and then the remainder we'll check this here we have divided num7 70 upon 80 sorry num8 by num7 just a second yeah it's num8 by num7 so it's 80 by 70 divisor is 1 and then remainder is 10 then we have compute statement we have given num7 as 70 num8 as 80 so it calculated it according to this num7 minus num8 plus twice of num7 and we have got our result as 130 exit so this is all about basic verbs in the next class we'll see redefine statement rename statements and copy books